All right, so let's start doing a more real example. I've had all these examples with pets. Um, let's talk about how we can make a sequence. Um, well, first, let's just review what is a sequence. A sequence is um, an object that I can do various things on. I can, uh, any type of uh, sequence I have, I can get the length, I can index it, slice it, use a for loop, convert it to a list. Um, and, um, and so I've seen different types of sequence, right? I've seen um, strings, I've seen lists. Um, not everything is a sequence. For example, a dictionary is not a sequence. I can't, I can't take a slice of a dictionary or, or I, I can't readily convert a dictionary to a, a list because I have both these separate keys and values. Um, but whether I'm creating uh, things like dictionaries or, or, or kind of various types of sequences, something is that, that's going to be very key is how I can deal with this. How can I have my object? Um, oops, excuse me. How can I have my um, object and then after it put some brackets and put some things in those brackets and uh, and then define what we're going to get back um, that's the key here and and the answer is going to be I'm going to have a special method and whatever is in the brackets is going to be an input or an argument to the method and then I'm going to return back what the whole piece should be right so more and more you're seeing like there's all these things like um, operators or brackets or things like that really I mean it, it's all kind of uh, methods being called, but it's just kind of fancier syntax. And, and so for this, I'm going to actually do something fairly real. Um, I'm going to build the, the range sequence. So you might not realize that um, range uh, is another type of sequence, right? I mean, certainly I can uh, loop over the range, but but let's try to explore some of these other things as well. Let's say I, um, rather than putting range here, I mean, could I capture this in a variable, right? Should I say r1 equals range, and um, and try to do all these different things, right? I mean, I can get the length of a range. Um, I can uh, can I get a slice of a range, right? What if I say something like R one from five on? I, I I can do that, and you can actually see that the way um, the slicing works is that um, well, I'm getting all the numbers from five to ten exclusive, so I guess five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So I can do slicing. Could I convert this to a list? Absolutely, right? So, so actually like a range, right? Is just another type of, of sequence, right? And, and I can um, do them in different ways, right? I mean, I can kind of do these simple ranges that go from zero to something, or if I want, I can specify both like a starting number and, uh, and maybe like an ending number, right? Either of those um, work fine. Okay, so, oh, and the last thing, right? Well. When I have this R2, what happens if I look at the number at position one? That's four, right? Because zero would go to three, position one goes to four. And um, this range, I mean, that's built into Python, but there's nothing special about it. Uh, I can personally create a new class that works just like range, and that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. And to do that, right, I have some a couple examples of here uh, of how it behaves. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to capital range, which doesn't work, of course, in capital range. And the idea is, is I know how uh, these things are supposed to behave. And so when I create my class range, I will know, I will know um, if, if it's kind of behaving the, the way the one behaves that is built into Python, right? So I can do that. And, um, and so right off the bat, right, I can see that it's complaining because my object takes no parameters. And, and so maybe what I should do here is I should create a constructor, right? Because I'm passing in an argument down here. So I have to have a constructor. And, um, and well, how many, how many parameters should I take here? Uh, I need two. I need one for my new range object and then one for this number down here, right? So, so I'm gonna say self and um, I call this bound one. You, you know what though? Actually, sometimes I may have self in, in just a single bound, and then other times I may have uh, my object and, and then two numbers, right? So to make this optional, I, I can do something like this. Um, and, and so I, I either have to put in one number or two numbers. And you know, it's kind of funny, right? Because when I put in one number, right? So five goes to bound one, uh, that, that's the upper bound, right? But if I have two numbers, the first one is a lower bound, right? You see that? So at, at, at position one down here, 
position one that's a lower bound, up here at position one that's an upper bound. So really I have to check right immediately if, if bound two is passed in. Uh, so if I only get one number, then what? Then I'm gonna say self dot lower, I'm gonna start at zero, right? If I just get one number and upper will be bound one. And this is exclusive and this is inclusive. And otherwise, right, if I if I get the two numbers, right, then self.lower equals bound one, self.upper equals bound two, just like that. Okay. Let me do that and um and well how far can I get? Let me let me see. So I don't need this pass anymore. Maybe let me just create an object right here. I may say R1 equals range of five. And I want to see what that looks like. Um, so, so immediately, one thing I see is that um, this is not very great, right? I, I guess what I'd like to have is a wrapper, right? A representation method, right? So I'm going to define representation, and I have to pass in this. And well, what do I want to return? Well, whatever it would take to recreate one of these objects, right? So I'm going to return a format string that looks like this. It's gonna say the range and then the lower and, and the upper. And, and the way I can um, embed something in a format string is that I put these brackets and I put some code in here. So I can say self.lower and some brackets, early brackets, or I guess braces, and I can say self.upper. And then that works great. I can do a little code snippet I could do to, um, to create it. Th this is a kind of a common example of how you'll develop your um, classes, right? You should have a snippet of code on how you want to use your class and then kind of use that to drive what you're implementing, right? Because then you'll kind of have this uh, rewarding feeling, right? Well, uh, I added something to my class and now this other use case starts to work, right? It's just kind of a good work habit. Um, let, let's try this. Let's say I want to do some slicing, right? So I want to say, well, what is the second number? Actually, I should test you know this up here as well. So I'm going to say like, what happens if I go from three to nine? That works fine. And, and what if I want to try to do this? Well, it's saying that my range object does not support indexing. Um, indexing kind of more broadly is about, well, what do I put inside of these brackets? If I want to create a class that support indexing, I have to use a special method called get item. Whenever I put brackets after my object, get item gets called, and and I get two things. I get well, I get the object I'm working on goes to self as always, and then the thing in the brackets goes here. And I can return whatever I want. I can um, return. Uh, I'll just return high for now. So let me define this and. Really, kind of what you're seeing is that these brackets, right, is a quick way to call the get item function or the get item method. That's a fine way to think about it. Um, and uh, let me try putting something else. I'm going to say, uh, want to look up whatever that lookup value is. Want to look up two. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually return. Uh, kind of what I'm looking for. And hmm, let, let me kind of think through these use cases. Uh, well, well, let's say that first, let's start with like zero, right? Um, in this case, if I'm looking up zero, uh, the first number in this range is three. So I guess I want to, you know, if I have zero, I want to return three. Um, if I want to look up the number of position one, I guess that's right after three, which is four. Kind of what I'm feeling is that I want to do self.bound one or self.lower, the lower bound, plus whatever that lookup is. So, so does that kind of work? So uh, the, the next value would be four, the next value would be five. Um, so that seems pretty good, right? I think I'm, um, I'm making some good progress. Uh, I like that. Well, what if I, what, what if I do something like this? What if I do something that's out of range? Just think for a moment what's going to happen there. What, what will I get back? 
I mean, we're so we're so used to dealing with lists, right? When I see something like this, I'm like, well, it's not that big. I only have like six values there. Uh, when I look at something like that, I feel like I'm gonna get an, uh, uh, some sort of index error. Uh, but guess what? I don't. For me to do that, somebody has to write some code here to say that that's not uh, valid, right? And so, so maybe what I should do is I should have some sort of check, and I should say uh, if that check uh, fails, I should raise an exception. And um, and, I, and I could kind of just leave that as its exception in general, um, but but it'd be kind of specific. Maybe the exception I should raise is index error, and I can say. Um, uh, index to peg, something like that, right? And, and then, well, what do I do here? Um, well, let me think about this. I, I, I guess, when is this lookup value too big? If lookup is greater than, greater than what? Well, I guess it kind of depends on how many values I have. I mean, I have something like this, self dot upper minus self dot lower, is that right? You know what I always like to do is think through the small example. So, so let's say I'm looking up the value at position zero. So I have zero on this side. And, and let's say my range is just from zero to zero like this. Um, is zero, so, well, if I have a range from zero to zero, I mean, that's empty, right? I mean, I don't have no values because this is inclusive. This is inclusive and this is exclusive. So, so even if I try to look at position zero, this should fail, right? So I guess if lookup is bigger than this difference, um, I want to fail. And, and I wouldn't, right? So, so really what I need to do is I need to say um, greater than or equal to, right? If I'm greater than or equal to this difference, I, I am past the end, right? And that doesn't work. Right, so let me just try to test this, right? So if I off at position zero, I get that index error, right? And you can see, right? You can see that when I ran this code, my method that item got called, right? And that's where I'm raising this from, even though I didn't explicitly call it, right? The brackets are a way of calling get item, right? So, well, what if I do something like this? I'm gonna go back to three, uh, let's say I'm at like seven. So I guess I have three, four, five, six. If I have three, four, five, six, I guess um, well, zero still works, right? That gives me the first number in the range, which is three. One works, two works, three works. And then I like to try both sides of a boundary, right? To really test my code. If, if I put four here, that should not work because, well, for four to work, I need to have five numbers and there are only four. Okay, so that's working beautifully, right? So that's working uh, like I expected. What, what if I do something like this, right? If I say like, um, if I say like negative one. Well, well, that's a little funny, right? Um, I might have expected that I would get six, right? Because six is the last number in that range. And, um, and so what I have to do is I have to say, well, if look up, is less than zero. Uh, I mean, what I could do is I could implement it, right? I mean, I could implement that code here. Um, another thing I can do, right, when you're implementing these special methods, is you can decide that there's certain cases you don't want to handle. And, and the way you can do that is you can raise a not implemented error. Just tell people, hey, you're doing something that I haven't supported, right? So maybe I'm gonna say negative index not supported. And then somebody using my class won't be confused, right? They'll get that and they're like, okay, well, I guess they just haven't done that yet. And, and so that will be just fine. Okay, so I'm doing pretty good here. Um, what if I want to do something like this? I wanna loop over all the numbers in my range. So uh, I'm gonna say, maybe I'll do something like this. I do that and that actually seems to work work fine so let me let me do this how, how is this working so i'm wondering let me let me print off these different lookups right so i'm going to say lookup uh, and i'm looking up this value here what, what you're going to see when this loop is running is that it looks up the value at zero then it looks up the value at one then it looks up the value at two 
so on and so forth. That's what a for loop does when we're dealing with a, a sequence or something that has this get item. And you see at the very end, I did a lookup of five on R1. Well, and what happens when I do a, a R1 lookup? So let me, let me just try that. When I did a lookup at five, I get an index error, okay? And I didn't get any exception up here, right? I, I had this exception, right? I, I had that. I said, hey, like you're trying to look up something that's not there. And, but I never saw when this code ran. And that's because a for loop can deal with index errors, right? It just keeps trying the indexes bigger and bigger until we complain with an index error. And, and the nice thing is, is that for somebody writing a for loop, the for loop takes care of that, right? The person writing the for loop doesn't ever have to know that there was an, an index error there. So that's great, right? So let me let me get rid of this. You can see that this is very sequence-like, right? What else can I do? Um, what if I want to convert it to a list, right? If I want to convert R1 to a list, that works fine. I mean, converting something to a list is really just like looping over that sequence and adding those things to a list, right? So, so really by implementing this one thing, we're really kind of getting all this behavior um, of a function. What if I what if I want to do something like um, what if I want to do something like this? I want to say, well, what is the length of R1? And now I have a problem, right? It doesn't have any any length supported, and to get that to work, I may have to add this length method, right? So I'm going to say define length, then myself, and um, well, let me think here. It's going to be something like this. It's going to be something like self dot upper minus self dot lower, right? Those are the number of numbers I have, right? Uh, but, but that's not quite right. And the reason is that if these numbers were the same, uh, I would have, actually that is right. If, if these numbers are the same, then I don't have anything because the upper is exclusive and the lower is inclusive. So, so let me just try this. Does that work? Beautiful. There's five numbers, which is exactly um, exactly what I would expect, right? So I, I can I can get these um, uh, with really just I mean I implemented this one method, well two I guess, and going back to this, I, I have almost all these things. I have length, I have index, I have looping, I have converting to a list, and, and you see the last thing I have here, slicing. That's the tricky one, and I'm just trying to kind of hint at what's necessary to do that uh, without actually doing it in that video. Um, let's let's try to create a slice, right? So down here, um, you know, I've been implementing this uppercase range. Let, let me just go back to lowercase range like this, right? If I if I if I try to, you know, get the last, say the last ten numbers there, you can see that, that works fine. Or or what if I say like you know, numbers three to five, that works fine. Um, when I create my own range, I get a type error. And where is that type error happening? It's happening in cell 114 on line 14. And the error is that this operator is not supported on instances of, uh, of slice. And, and so let me head back here. So well, what cell, cell is it? I guess I'm in cell 114. Okay. And then line 14. And it's saying that I cannot use this on a slice. So, so this must be of some type slice. So let me actually print off what lookup is. I'm going to print off the type of lookup and let me delete some stuff here to clean this up. And, uh, and if I say something like R of zero or R one of zero, I see that, well, zero goes to lookup and everything is fine. It's an integer, right? I get an integer when I do that. Um, but what, what if I say something like this? I say like slice from zero to three then what I'm actually getting inside of this lookup variable is a slice object, right? So this little snippet here, Python converts that to a slice object and it puts it to here. And so maybe what I could do is I could actually look at that. Let's, let's print off what lookup is. I can see I get this slice that starts from goes from one until three. And if I wanted to, right, I mean, I could use that. I could use a slice to figure out how to make that slice object to figure out how to make a new range. Uh, that's a lot of work and there's tricky cases. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add another case, right? I'm gonna say if type of lookup, 
that equal to int. Then I'm going to return. What am I going to return? I'm going to return a not implemented error. I'm going to return this. Uh, and I'm just going to say only int indexing supported. Right, and so I'm going to get the, this, right? Uh, when, when I try to run that. And, and actually this is kind of, um, I shouldn't return it, right? I, mean, I should raise it, sorry. <laughs> I was wondering why it looks so strange. Okay, now I actually get an exception. Right? I'm going to raise it, and that doesn't work. And in the same way, too, if I tried to use it like a dictionary, it would say only integer index supported. And, and so this is not bad, right? I mean, we've implemented most of the functionality here of the real um, range sequence there, and you can implement other um, other sequences if, if you want, kind of using this pattern.